Hello everybody and welcome to the Money Shift YouTube channel. I am Thanasi and this is a 1983 Auto Bianchi A112 Junior. Now the Auto Bianchi A112 was produced starting in the late 60s and they made about 1.2 million of these and they made a host of different models with the hottest one being the Abarth, much like the Abarth 500. And this one has a host of modifications to make it similar, including these 13 inch mini light wheels with the Abarth center caps and the Abarth engine. This thing actually has the 1050 cc 70 horsepower Abarth engine and I know what you're thinking. The Nasi 70 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot, but you got to remember, guys, this car weighs 1,500 pounds, so it is incredibly light. And while this car not be familiar to you, it is familiar to a lot of people in the world. And this thing does have, again, a host of modifications that make it sportier, including that OMP chassis bracing underneath. And it actually has an OMP strut bar under the hood, which is really, really cool. Working our way to the interior, there's actually been a host of things done to bring this car to the 21st century. And that includes speakers. Look at these JBLs. <laughs> this thing has a thumping audio system in a little car. But then you'll also notice really quickly all the glass in here. Because this car was made in the 80s, the safety regs were in a different place, which allowed you to just have a really big greenhouse. So you can focus on the cash and prizes, which is that aftermarket tack, which is just stacked onto the hood. But look at where the little center receiver is. Hidden. I love that. It's so cool. But yeah, this car has air conditioning. It's got a decent sound system. Uh, it's perfectly suited for day-to-day -day driving. Let's get to the back roads. Okay. I'm sure, as you guys will notice, we're starting further on in the back roads portion. And that is because we're gonna be going a little slower in this car. <laughs> Sub 100 horsepower means the speeds we're gonna be hitting aren't crazy. So, how is the Auto Bianchi, the Auto Bianchi, in the back roads. <laughs> well, what we're looking for in the back roads are a couple things. Sound, steering feel, transmission feel, and brake feel. So let's go over them. How's the sound? Well, I'll let you guys be the judge as we pull out of this corner here. I don't know about you guys, I love the sound. I think there are a few things better than a small four-cylinder engine with a couple carbs on it. It's just throaty and, oh, it's, it's phenomenal. How's the steering? Well, it's an unassisted rack, so it truly does feel like a go-kart you would ride as a kid. How's the transmission? It's like you have a stick and a box of gravel. <laughs> You're kind of guessing. I mean, after you drive the car for a little bit, you know where to put it for first, second, third, and fourth but you are guessing if the car is engaged. There is no notchiness to that. How are the brakes? A bit spongy, uh, but after you get past a certain point, they are incredibly firm and very precise. It is easy to modulate the brakes in this car. How's the comfort? I mean, these seats do a pretty good job at holding me in place. I mean, again, I'm six feet 280, so I definitely wasn't the target market for this car. But I'm comfy. And thanks to this OMP chassis bracing, this car is relatively flat, even around pretty curvy corners. Overall, the back road section, this thing is slow car fast. It is a ton, a ton of fun. But let's take it to the highway where I think, I think the car might fall flat. Let's see. But let's be honest, I'm not going to drive the same distance that I usually drive on the highway. And why might you ask that? Well, that's because we're only going to be going about 40, 45 miles an hour on the highway. I did a dry run in this car, and while it can hit speeds faster than that, honestly, the speeds that I felt comfortable were at about 95, 95 kilometers. So that 50, 45, 50 mile an hour mark, I might be way off. I'll put the text in the bottom as to what that actually is. Let's get up to speed here. Listen to this car roar. It's getting up to speed just fine. I mean, keep in mind, this car weighs virtually nothing. So even though this car has under 100 horsepower, it doesn't matter. All right, as we turn onto the highway, the first thing that I notice is, holy cow, are these mirrors absolutely useless. 
they're lower than the window in some instances. I'll show you a clip of that right now. On the right side, I can't even see it. And on the left side, I have to, I have to sort of scrunch down if I want to see it. So as we get past left, right, and center here, because we're only going 100 kilometers an hour, let's talk a little bit about how this car feels on the highway. At this speed, again, 100 kilometers an hour, it's rock solid. I mean, I'm not bouncing around. It is a windy day, but I'm not moving. And even though these mirrors are useless, because this car was built in the 80s, the pillars are incredibly small. And what that means is the greenhouse is unbelievable. I don't need these mirrors because I can see where everyone is coming at any time. And that's perfect. funny thing about this car. I have more people drive past me that give me some sort of wave, thumbs up, whatever, than I do drive past me that don't do anything. This car draws a lot of attention and it's hilarious. So let's be real. While this car can do highway trips, you know, to your cars and coffee in the morning, you're going to have to budget some extra time because you're not going to be going 75, 80 like you're used to in your current daily driver. But highway aside, let's get to the around the town portion where I'm going to go a little bit more into the history of this car and its owner, as well as talk about if you should look into the Auto Bianchi A112 to buy. Let's see. of the back road and the highway portion before we dive a little bit deeper into this car and its history. So, how is the Auto Bianchi to drive on the back road? Well, in the back road section, what I care most about are three main things, really. I care about sound, and this car has it in spades. <laughs> I care about steering feel, and let's be honest, few things be an unassisted steering. And I care about transmission feel, and that's where this car falters the most on the back roads portion, is it has slightly squishy brakes, which, hey, it's just a, <laughs> a product of the era, and it's got a gravel box for a transmission. And on the highway, the car cruises just fine, but it does it at 50 miles an hour, so you gotta factor that in when you're going to your morning cars and coffee. <laughs> so as we get into this around town cruising sort of portion, this is where this car really does feel comfortable. It's going 35, 40 miles an hour down a nice town road with not a care in the world. You're just cruising and having fun. This, this is where this car shines. Leave it in a gear and just go for it. So why do I have the keys to an Auto Bianchi A112? Where in the hell did this car come from? So, the story's pretty simple. Actually, there's a photo in the back seat. This, <laughs> this right here, that's my father. <laughs> and that was his car in Greece, an Auto Bianchi A112. He outfitted that car with the new front end and rear end, and just like this one, swapped in the bigger motor. When he moved from Greece to the US, that car obviously had to stay. And with that was his love. I mean, that thing had a roll cage. It was fully kitted out. The car was cool, man. The thing was awesome. So recently, my sister, my parents, we've been trying to find my father another one of those cars. And we were sent a bring a trailer auction by Clark. That bring a trailer auction was for this very car. So we started to bid. And wouldn't you know it, we got it. <laughs> Fast forward two weeks and in came a really big truck from Canada holding this little car. And it was hilarious. Picture a really big transport truck. The drawer opens 
and you don't see anything. You're like, wait a minute, <laughs> is this an empty trailer? No, 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 no. The Auto Bianchi's in there, it's just all the way in the front, all the way in the back. You can barely see it from the outside. So we were able to secure another Auto Bianchi A112 for my father. And it, he, he loves it. I mean, it does really drive a lot of nostalgia. He was telling me a story about how he drove from Athens to his village in Greece, a five-hour drive at the time, with himself, my mother, and his in-laws in the back and their luggage, okay? We tried to, to justify buying an SUV or a pickup truck just because we buy a house and need to go to Home Depot. <laughs> he fit four people in here and all their luggage, no problem, and they drove five hours. Picture that drive, five hours. So that is why this car is here today. And it's awesome. I mean, this it's a breath of fresh air and it truly, truly drives home the fact that slow cars are fun and power is not everything. This car makes well under 100 horsepower, well under 100 horsepower, but it's a ball to drive. Listen, the sound is so good. <laughs> the steering is magnificent. The room in here is great. I mean, I'm six feet tall. You guys know I'm 280. I fit in here just fine. I felt more claustrophobic in modern cars than I do in this thing. So should you buy one? Is this the car for you? Well, let's get to that. Ah, so you are a person of culture and are considering an Auto Bianchi A112. Should you be? Well, as I drive this car down this lovely road, that's a hard question to answer. And the reason why it's hard is a couple things. For one, I love the fact that this isn't an original Mini Cooper. While it is of similar size, of similar spec, it's different and it stands out because of it. I mean, you're likely to be the only person with an Auto Bianchi A112 anywhere you go around the world, unless you're going to an Auto Bianchi meetup. And that's something, I mean, there's something to be said for that, especially because while I haven't driven a Mini Cooper, I can't imagine its experience being too far removed from this one. But, but, with that comes exclusivity. And exclusivity means hard to find parts because this car is so niche because there are so few in the US while there are a couple people that hoard and store parts you're gonna be hard-pressed to find what you need should anything break and that is something to keep in mind when considering a vehicle even if it is gonna be your secondary if you want to get a hood for this car if you want to get doors for this car seats for this car a dash a head whatever you're gonna to have to look and you're gonna to have to look hard and that is something that cannot be ignored when considering a niche specialty vehicle like this is the driving experience worth it so I take this little corner here yeah I mean guys if if you're already in the mindset that you want a car like this, and what is a car like this? It's a car that won't wow anyone on the dyno sheet, won't throw you back in your seat. Well, I say that, but if you have it in a low gear, it'll it'll jockey a little bit. The engine's really responsive. But you're not gonna be winning any contests or any any setting any records anytime soon. If you're in that mindset, then I'd consider one of these for sure. And the good news is, is because they aren't an original Mini Cooper, you can find these for good money, if you can find them. I mean, the price of ours is on Bring a Trailer, but we paid under 5,000 for this thing. Find me an original Cooper for under 5,000 that has a host of really rare OMP chassis bracing and an upgraded motor like this car. You won't be able to. So if you're looking for that 
wheel, that small Italian car, or just small car in general that, that's fun to drive and corners well and sounds awesome, yeah, consider one of these. What's another car you'd consider instead of one of these? An original Honda Civic. The CVCC, I think it was called? That's a car that has a more plentiful aftermarket in the sense of replacement parts. It's a little bigger and it's easier to come by. I'd keep that in your thoughts if you're looking for a small compact car. Keep that original Honda in, in, in your mind because it's a good one. But I love this car. I mean, I my cheeks hurt because off camera while I was driving this, I just couldn't help but giggle at every little thing this car does from stressing out, finding where second is instead of fourth to just listening to this carved motor. I'm smiling from ear to ear all the time. I do really, really love this car and I'm extremely fortunate to be able to drive it whenever, honestly, whenever, well, pretty much whenever I want. Like, it's it's awesome. As we sign off today, I wanted to thank you guys for the support you continue to give this channel. We're up to over 100 subscribers now. The view counts are really good. The comments are awesome. You guys rock, and I couldn't be more appreciative than I am. Thank you so, so much. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like. It would help dramatically, and I would really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for that. As always, drive safe, and we'll see you next week on the Money Shift channel.